Elon Musk wants to use Starship to colonize Mars, but let's be honest, until we figure out how to terraform the planet, it's still extremely uninhabitable. In fact, every planet in our solar system is deadly in its own unique way. However, orbiting the closest star to us is an exoplanet called Proxima Centauri b. Scientists believe it may offer the best chance for life beyond Earth. The question is, can we ever get there? Earth is becoming less habitable every day. Climate change is worsening, and sudden disasters like a comet impact or nuclear war could make Earth unfit for human life. If that happens, we'll need another place to go. One of the most promising options is the Alpha Centauri system. Located approximately 25 trillion miles from Earth, Alpha Centauri is a triple star system consisting of a binary pair, Alpha Centauri A and B, and a third, more distant star known as Alpha Centauri C, also called Proxima Centauri. This third star is currently the closest known star to Earth, and because of its relative proximity, scientists have been able to gather more detailed information about the three planets that orbit it. Among them, Proxima b stands out as the only Earth-like candidate. Proxima b's location in the habitable zone makes it a compelling candidate in the search for a second home for humanity. But what does this really mean? The habitable zone, often called the Goldilocks zone, is the region around a star where conditions are just right for liquid water to exist on a planet's surface. And why is liquid water so important? Because it's essential for life as we know it, and yes, even for making porridge. Liquid water isn't just a nice to have, it's one of the key ingredients we look for when searching for planets that might support life, either for future human exploration or as possible homes to alien ecosystems. Outside this temperate band, things go sideways fast. Too close to the star and the planet becomes a scorched wasteland. Water boils off into steam, molecules break apart, hydrogen escapes into space, and the remaining oxygen binds with carbon to form carbon dioxide. This runaway greenhouse effect is exactly what happened on Venus. Too far from the star, and everything freezes. Oceans become glaciers, and the surface turns into a planetary skating rink. While there might be some liquid water trapped deep beneath thick ice layers, such planets are generally poor candidates for habitation. So whether you're scouting for your future interstellar home or hoping to find signs of alien life, start your search in the habitable zone. However, being located in the habitable zone alone does not make a planet truly habitable. Another critical factor is a planet's atmospheric composition. Earth's atmosphere, especially its greenhouse gases and ozone layer, plays a vital role in sustaining life by shielding us from harmful levels of solar radiation. Proxima b might offer similar protection, but the situation is far from certain. While it orbits much closer to its host star than Earth does to the Sun, Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf, meaning it emits less energy overall. As a result, Proxima b receives lower levels of radiation, which could be advantageous. That said, there are significant concerns. Proxima Centauri is a flare star, known for sudden bursts of intense radiation. One NASA study has shown that this radiation may be eroding Proxima b's atmosphere at a much faster rate than Earth's. So far, scientists have gathered limited conclusive evidence about the current state of Proxima b's atmosphere, making its habitability uncertain. But there's still reason for hope. Even if Proxima b lost its original atmosphere, it might not be the end of its potential for life. Volcanic activity could eventually generate a secondary atmosphere, likely rich in carbon dioxide. While this would differ from Earth's, such an atmosphere could be more stable in the long term, especially if oceans are present. The interaction between atmospheric mass, ocean size, and composition could help prevent atmospheric collapse. Additionally, impacts from exocomets, if they exist in the system, could deliver fresh water, further increasing the planet's habitability prospects. Okay, sounds promising enough. The question now is, can we go to Proxima Centauri b? The short answer is no, or more precisely, not yet. With our current rocket technology, interstellar travel is still far out of reach. To travel anywhere meaningful in our galaxy within a human lifetime, we'd need to move at a significant fraction of the speed of light. That's a tall order, considering Proxima Centauri is 4.3 light years away, which means even light itself takes over four years to get there. To put that in perspective, the fastest spacecraft we've ever built is NASA's New Horizons probe, which travels at about 58,000 kilometers per hour. At that speed, it would take roughly 80,000 years to reach Proxima Centauri b. Other spacecraft like Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are also blazing through space at approximately 61,000 kilometers per hour and 55,000 kilometers per hour, respectively. But they aren't heading in the direction of Proxima b. Even if they were, the travel time would still be in the 80,000 year range. Clearly not a viable option for human exploration. A more recent example is the Parker Solar Probe, which made history in 2021 as the first spacecraft to fly through the sun's corona. 
At its peak, it travels at an astonishing 700,000 kilometers per hour, fast enough to get from Philadelphia to Washington, D.C. in under a second. But it only reached that speed in very short intervals, and even then, it was just 0.06% the speed of light. So yes, we're making progress, but it's still not sustainable for long-distance interstellar travel. We'll need to do a lot better than that if we want to reach the closest exoplanet to us in any reasonable amount of time. Chemical rockets, the kind we're using today, simply won't get us anywhere near fast enough, and they come with major limitations. As the fuel requirement increases, it becomes more difficult for the rocket to launch due to the added mass, since we can only reach non-relativistic speeds which are speeds that don't significantly affect the rocket's mass. And because we have a finite fuel supply, we're restricted in both how fast we can go and how far we can travel. Eventually, the rocket just runs out of fuel before it can get anywhere near a distant star system like Proxima Centauri. If we truly want to begin somewhere, a flyby mission might be the most viable option. And it's also wise to use smaller, lightweight spacecraft. Their low mass means they require less energy to accelerate, which can be a major advantage in pushing them to higher speeds. While individual, small spacecraft may not match the capabilities of larger ones, like the Voyagers, they offer significant benefits. Shorter development timelines, lower costs, and greater flexibility for rapid iteration and deployment. The CEO of the startup Space Initiatives, Inc., who is also a fellow at NASA's Innovative Advanced Concepts program, is exploring remote methods for reaching Proxima Centauri using swarms of ultra-lightweight spacecraft, each with a mass of less than 10 grams per square meter. And he isn't the only one pursuing this kind of research. In 2016, Breakthrough Initiatives launched its Starshot project, aiming to pair nanometer-scale spacecraft with light sails capable of reaching nearby star systems. Just a year later, in 2017, NASA began funding its own interstellar effort, a mission to Alpha Centauri, with a target launch date of 2069. The method used to propel spacecraft using a light sail, or solar sail, is a fascinating concept. It relies on radiation pressure, the force exerted by sunlight on large reflective surfaces. One way to visualize this is by imagining a ball being thrown at a sheet of paper. When the ball hits the paper, it transfers momentum, pushing it backward. In a similar way, photons, particles of light, transfer their momentum when they strike the sail, gradually propelling the spacecraft forward. Another helpful analogy is that of a traditional sailing boat. Just as wind pushes against a sail to move a boat, sunlight pushes against the sail of a spacecraft to generate motion. Although the force from sunlight is extremely small, it is continuous and accumulates over time, making it effective for long-duration space missions. Solar radiation pressure affects all spacecraft, whether they are in orbit around a planet or traveling through interplanetary space. For instance, a spacecraft en route to Mars can be displaced by thousands of kilometers due to solar pressure. This influence must be carefully accounted for in trajectory planning, a practice that dates back to the earliest interplanetary missions of the 1960s. In addition to affecting trajectory, solar pressure also influences a spacecraft's orientation or attitude. As a result, engineers must consider its effects when designing and operating spacecraft to ensure accurate navigation and control. High-energy laser beams offer a promising alternative to sunlight for propelling spacecraft using a concept known as beam sailing. By continuously firing an intense laser at a lightweight reflective sail, it's theoretically possible to accelerate a small spacecraft to a significant fraction of the speed of light. For instance, with a laser array producing 25 gigawatts of power, we could potentially send a 100-kilogram probe to Alpha Centauri, our nearest stellar neighbor, in about 40 years. However, one of the biggest engineering challenges lies in controlling the light sail. The laser can be aimed precisely at the target star's future position, but the sail must remain perfectly balanced on the beam. Even a slight tilt would reflect the laser light asymmetrically, imparting a tiny sideways push. Over time, that minor deviation will grow, gradually steering the spacecraft off course. 
Since achieving perfect alignment is practically impossible, some form of correction mechanism is essential. Traditional spacecraft use internal gyroscopes and thrust vectoring engines to maintain orientation and stability, but such systems are too heavy for an ultralight interstellar probe. Moreover, adjusting the laser beam from Earth wouldn't work. Signals would take months or even years to reach the spacecraft, making real-time control infeasible. While the technology to build and test such missions is still evolving, including ultra-compact communication systems and lightweight control mechanisms, there are no known physical laws preventing this kind of mission. A laser-driven light sail could very well carry out a flyby of Alpha Centauri. Fusion rockets are also a promising technology. But so far, we don't have any that actually work. Still, if we could harness the energy from fusing helium-3 and deuterium, we might achieve sustained speeds comparable to the Parker Solar Probe, around 0.06% the speed of light. At that rate, it would take roughly 25,000 years to reach Proxima Centauri b. If humans ever want to set foot on an exoplanet, we may have to develop technology straight out of science fiction, like cryogenic sleep capsules that allow people to hibernate for hundreds of years, waking only upon arrival. Just hope no one wakes up halfway there. Space is unimaginably vast, but even so, it would be nice to unlock propulsion systems capable of reaching significant fractions of light speed. Because if we want to go interstellar, we'll need to cover those enormous distances in something closer to human timescales.